Hey, this is Kevin for Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and in this episode of 10 Minutes With, I talk to Adrian Miller, the Soul Food Scholar. And if you're digging these, please subscribe to either my podcast or my YouTube channel. You can find the podcast if you type in Kevin's BBQ Joints and in your podcast networks, or go to youtube.com slash Kevin's BBQ Joints. I also have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com where I'll have all of these 10 minutes with, as well as my podcasts, my YouTube interview series, and a ton more. Enjoy this. Well, good morning, Adrian. Good morning. How are you? I am great. How are you? You're pretty busy, huh? Yeah, man. You know, doing what I can with what I got. <laughs> you are, you're leaving tomorrow. So let's, I want to talk about your, your new project. So what's, what's your new project? So my new project is a history of African-American barbecue culture, tentatively titled Black Smoke. Oh, cool. I'm very proud of that title. I love that. Bro. And uh, So it's, it's really, it's kind of a history. It's a look at where barbecue culture is now with African-Americans. And it's really kind of a shout out to all these unsung uh, barbecue people, um, because in a lot of rundowns of barbecue and depictions of barbecue, you don't see many African Americans. And I agree. This, this project is a hump on the head to say, look, that's just whack. It is. <laughs> it's completely whack. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially especially because the, the, a, a lot of these places now that are getting all this acclaim, they they walk they're wall walking on the shoulders of all these African American barbecue joints. That yeah, you know what's interesting is as I look through the history, is how many. Um, White run barbecue joints either have a black pit master or the, somebody taught them how to do. You know, an African American taught them how to how to do that work. So it's been fascinating to uncover that history. That is really interesting. So, so where have you gone so far? And also, and I want to talk about where you've gone so far. Where you're going tomorrow? Because I've caught you right before you're you're on another adventure. And then the and then the project itself. Are you still looking for assistance? Or oh yeah, absolutely. So, I, anybody who wants to come and eat with me, I call them a barbecue research assistant. So, <laughs> okay. I've got a lot of people in different cities ready to join me, which is the coolest thing because a lot of times when you talk to the locals. You get a better read on the barbecue scene than you may just from looking online or just going through newspapers, that kind of thing. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. So, so far, I have been to Chicago, the south side, just the south side of Chicago, okay. uh, Seattle, Phoenix, uh, and Environs, and also Memphis. And uh, so I'm really kind of early in the research. The manuscript's not due for another year. Okay. So I'll be traveling a lot this year. So uh, tomorrow I leave for Houston. And I have to thank you because it's actually your uh, interview with J.C. Reed that kind of laid out my itinerary for the the spots I'm going to hit. Oh, that's fantastic! You know what that that was J.C. It was it was so perfect because I I wanted to know about you know where people should go. What are the not quote unquote trendy or the or like the places that are are right now people are really interested. But uh, those those off the beaten path and those African American joints. He was so great. That was uh, thank you, thank you for the shout out, and also thank you for for watching that because I think that was a great one. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no problem. So um, yeah, so I have three days of barbecue lined up. Um, so a lot of, again, mostly African American joints. So I'll be in Houston, but then I'm going to trek out to, uh, uh, Galveston and then also to mm. the Beaumont area, um, just to try to see uh, different barbecue traditions, especially I'm really curious about the kind of this boudin and, uh, kind of beef hot link, uh, tradition, which I know is kind of vanishing. So I want to, I want to capture it by some artisans before it disappears. I think that's smart. And that's, that's what's so interesting is with that Southern, su- like Southeastern portion of Texas. It's so different. I don't know yeah. if people realize how different Texas barbecue is from place to place. Yeah, I don't think so either because I think when people think Texas barbecue, they think Central Texas. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Austin and Lockhart, Luling, you know, all of those spots. And even North Northeastern is a lot different. Oh, and Northeastern, yeah. Do you have a certain way that you go about this? Are you going I, – I know I looked at your itinerary on your website and it might probably change a little bit. But do you try to hit about three places a day? Yeah, man. You know, I'm getting older. So this, <laughs> maybe I should train better for these things. But I'm just trying to manage how much I eat and uh, what I can really handle. Because back in the day, I used to do you know five, six places. And mm-hmm. I just knew, noticed that I was really worn down by the end of the day. So I'm kind of spreading it out. And, are, and are you, what are you finding along the way? Are you, are you finding places that – are closed too? Like, are you pl- finding a lot of places that are closed that you're having to do a lot more back research on? Yes, I am. So, uh, you know, I think this would have been a very different book if I had uh, maybe written it five years ago or 10 years ago, because mm-hmm. it seems like a lot of great kind of long standing tradition places have closed, uh, either because the owner died or just, you know, retired and nobody else wanted to carry on the business. And I saw the same thing in soul food mm-hmm. when I was writing my soul food book. So a lot of it is timing. Um, but fortunately, a lot of newspapers captured local life, especially the barbecue scene. So 
I'm finding some interesting stuff just by looking through old newspapers. Wow, that's that's what a what a great project. So you're so you're going to Houston now, and then are you you're leave you're going to in February? You have some spots too, or do you have late January? Yeah, uh, yeah. So February, I'm going to go to uh, the Carolinas, uh, and so it's going to be South Carolina, North Carolina. Um, I've got some spots picked out there. Then I'm going to go to Jacksonville because there's a guy named Chef Kenny Gilbert who was on Top Chef mm-hmm. uh, several years ago. I remember. He is actually trying to create a regional barbecue style from scratch. <laughs> that is so, so interesting. So he's going to create a northern barbecue style. So I got to find out what's going on with that. Oh, that's so great. Are you are you doing video of this too? Yeah. So I got to get much better because I'm, I'm pretty good on my uh, photo game, but I got to get much better of video. So uh, yeah, I'm going to actually try to vlog as I go through this journey. Okay. And if you know, if my game was tighter, I would have done that with my other trips. But you know, I'm learning. And that's and that's you know we're all aren't we all? Gosh, no. If if, if I had known ten years ago what what things would be today, I would have filmed every, everything. Yeah. But but I, if people want to send you tips or ideas or stories that they found in newspapers, should they go to your website? Is that the best way? Yeah, they can go to my website, or they can hit me up on Twitter or on Facebook. So I'm Soul Food Scholar on most platforms. Mm-hmm. So Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, if they go to Soul Food Scholar and just drop me a note, that'd be great. Or they can go to the website. I have a way to uh, email me through the website. So okay. that's cool too. And if they if they have time and they want to join me, hey, join me. <laughs> the more the merrier, right? Uh, so and also in February, I, I plan to go to Kansas City. But just in terms of current events, I, I got invited to uh, do an event with the Truman Presidential Library oh. in uh, Independence, Missouri. But because of the shutdown, I, the event might get canceled. Oh, wow. So I might have to delay the Kansas City trip, but we'll see. Wow. So that's actually something that's uh, very close to home that's being uh, affected by the shutdown. Yes, exactly. Messing with my food, man. <laughs> You can't mess with your barbecue. Uh, mess it's, up. it's one thing to mess with our uh, national parks, but <laughs> mess with our food. Right. Oh man, yeah. that, that's really interesting. So it would it would probably push everything back, close like closing things. Why? Uh, and I guess wow, that's a, that's yeah. really that is really interesting. Yeah, because the presidential libraries have to be closed during the shutdown. So in terms of their advanced planning, I don't know how much that throws yeah. things off. That might, so. yeah, yeah, that that definitely could change everything. What have you? Are there any standouts or or interesting spots that you've hit so far? That you- yeah, yes, absolutely. So uh, one place was called Little Reds in Seattle. Okay. So it's kind of a barbecue place with a Caribbean vibe because the guy's married to a Jamaican woman. Huh. So jerk spiced ribs, uh, Caribbean side dishes. Man, it was just tasty. Oh, that sounds interesting. Uh, and then yeah, and then in Chandler, Arizona, not too far out of Phoenix, there's a place called West Alley Barbecue. I met a fifth generation pitmaster from West Tennessee who got lured out there by a childhood friend, and he's just doing next level stuff, man. Oh, I have to go because I'm going. I'm heading out to Little Miss Barbecue in a few weeks, the two different locations. So that's not too far out of Phoenix. No, it's worth the drive. Seriously, or or, you know, or cab ride or whatever. I'm telling you, it's worth it. (laughs) A long cab ride. Do people? Yeah, that yeah. you're dating me and you because uh, the cab ride. No one takes cabs anymore, do we? <laughs> I was, was going to name some companies, but I didn't know if that was going to get in trouble. So. so, are there any other places that? Those are the two really so far. Okay. Um, oh, and I'm, I'm sorry, in Memphis. So I love Cozy Corner oh. Barbecue in Memphis. Um, I love the barbecue shop, um, especially their riff on barbecue spaghetti, which I think is actually the original recipe. I think they inherited from the creators of that, and then. Um, Talk about just a platonic ideal for a pork chopped pork sandwich. Pains. Oh. It's like chopped pork with a mustard slaw on it. Man, that's just no joke. And and if, and if people haven't seen that, Google that. It is. It's a sight to be seen. Yep. It's a good uh, and then there's a place called Helen's in Brownsville. It's a little bit outside of Memphis. I don't know if you've ever been there. Um, some good whole chicken. Um, I got there and so basically some other good stuff, but I, I like that spot as well. And she's still working there, right? Yeah, she's still working there. Yeah. It's quite a sight. I mean, you've got her doing the lion's share work. Her husband kind of helps get the fire started and, and helps around, but it's a one woman show for the most part. I think it's so great that you're highlighting these places because I think it's it's important historically, but it's also important for them. And also maybe people will take that off the beaten path to, to see them and, and support them. They they need all the support too. Yeah, absolutely. Because you, as you know, running a restaurant is not easy uh, and there's intense competition out there. So if I can highlight people doing good stuff, who don't get a lot of love, um, you know, I'm just happy to do it. And people will hopefully be using your book as a roadmap. I would hope. I hope so. Yeah. And maybe, some, yeah. maybe there'll be, maybe people will create a, a digital version too. So that way 
or at least some kind of Google map guide or something. I'm sure you're thinking of something. Hey, man, I'm ho- I just hope you're speaking it into existence. That's all I'm hoping. Excellent. Well, here, well, let's let's jump into I have I, I asked people three questions in this. Uh, the, the first question is, what would you be doing if you weren't doing what you're doing right now? Like if something completely different, is there, some, is there a career that you had wanted to do as a child or as a, a teenager? Believe it or not, I wanted to be in politics. Huh. So for a long time, I wanted to be president of the United States. And then when I worked in the White House, I was like, ah, I don't think I want to do that. Uh, so then I wanted to be the senator from Colorado oh. at some point. And uh, this food journey just kind of sidetracked me from that uh, and other things. So I probably would be in politics if I weren't uh, you know, doing what I do now. Is there a possibility that could happen someday? Yeah, because I'm a junkie. So I might get into it later in life. It just wasn't going to – it's not the core thing I thought it would be. I thought that would be my main career. Interesting. But I believe that uh, public service is important, so uh, important. and I want to get back to my country. So I might do it later. Okay, excellent. Well, let us know. Let's, uh, we'll all support you. My second question is what's, what's your favorite album or what are you listening to right now? Ooh. So I don't know, man. I still can't get over the fact that Prince has left us. So I listen to Prince's greatest hits. It's kind of a two C. Well, it's actually three CDs, but mm-hmm. I only listen to two. Of the collection, and uh, I just miss that guy, uh, his artistry, and uh, yeah, so that's what I got going right now. That that one actually is really great. I had that on CD, like the CDs, and then I actually uh, I have that now on my on Apple Music. But it's interesting because there's a lot of B sides on that that are just beautiful songs. Right, and I, he wrote he wrote some songs that I did not know. I did mm-hmm. not know he wrote uh, "Nothing Compares to You" mm-hmm. and, and these other songs. And I'm dating myself, I guess, because I said CDs, huh? Instead yeah, of uh... I did too. <laughs> <laughs> I think people like I think audiophiles they still grab that, right? They think they get. I think guess they get vinyl now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have said cassette tape. <laughs> yeah, exactly. On my eight track, I have tr- I have lots of Prince eight tracks. Or, uh, <laughs> that's like super date. I think that don't even, that's not even something. That's like probably like one of those things, like the Mandela effect. Did, was it even real? Did that even? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then my last my last question is, what's your favorite restaurant that's not barbecue? Ooh, so I love a yeah, I love a place called Bully Soul Food in Jackson, Mississippi. Okay. It's an old school place. It's really small. It's the kind of place where while you're sitting there eating soul food, somebody comes out periodically uh, to a table right off the main dining room, and they're uh, stripping greens and peeling sweet potatoes oh. right in front of you. It's that kind of place, man. That is really cool. Bully soul food. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's the first place that came to mind okay. uh, just now. That's yeah. great. No, that's perfect. That's that's and that's that's what I just want to highlight places that people might not know of. And I love that's the the main goal. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to celebrate barbecue, celebrate restaurants, and celebrate people like you that are doing unique projects. I got to tell you a funny funny moment about Bully Soul Food. So I was in the restaurant because vegan is a really hot trend in soul food right now. Huh. So I went to the owner and I just you know because I usually just ask if they have vegan options and he looked at me and said, "What's vegan?" <laughs> <laughs> That's a great answer. That's that's the best answer. I think that should be like that's a bumper sticker. What's <laughs> it was yeah, and that's actually funny because that would that could start so many conversations. But that's great. That's great that he doesn't know. That's I, that makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, well, Adrian, thank you for your time. Thank you, and, and have a great trip. I'll be following along. I'm going to try to get this thing up tonight, so that way, it, or at least by tomorrow okay. morning. Okay, great. Hey, well, thanks for uh, reaching out to me, and uh, man, here's to you and good eating. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and have, have a w- safe trip. Have a wonderful trip.